you probably shouldn't be using Web3 or Ethers JS if you're building out front-end applications in Web3. This doesn't mean that Ethers is a bad library, and I'm gonna show you how it's actually used in a lot of the more modern technology that I'm going to recommend for you in this video. But I think a lot of the original kind of onboarding content that got created for bringing in developers into Web3 uses some of the older tech that you might not be familiar with the alternatives. Let's talk about it. Ethers is a project that does everything you want a Web3 application to do. It allows you to connect to users' wallets, to connect to the blockchain itself using an RPC. It allows you to call smart contract functions, read information about the blockchain itself, everything you would expect about a typical Web3 application. If you've ever built a Web3 application before, and you probably have, I'm assuming that you've seen syntax like this because you probably consumed the same content that I did when I was trying to learn in Web3. So you would have done things like set up the Web3 provider, pass in window.ethereum and manage all of the connecting wallets yourself, doing things like the providers, the signers, passing your own RPC provider, you're working with Alchemy and things like that. You're then querying the blockchain and reading and writing data from smart contracts that look like this. So you would pass in the entire ABI and then call smart contract functions using ethers.contract. Ethers is super powerful, but if you're using it to build your front-end applications, your Web3 applications, you're not getting the most out of the tooling that is available in the ecosystem. If you're building something like a library, such as the libraries that I'm about to show you that are in the rest of this video, Ethers is perfect for you. But if you're building Web3 applications, users come in, connect their wallets, you are interacting with smart contracts on a front-end environment, I'm gonna show you some alternatives, some higher layers of abstraction that are built on top of ethers that are going to make your life 10 times easier. Let's jump into a diagram to kind of explore the different layers of abstraction when you're talking about tooling and building in Web3. Let's define our goal at the top here to be, I want a tool that can, uh, one, connect to wallets, two, connect to the blockchain, and three, connect to smart contracts and read and write functions on smart contracts. Let's left align this quickly. So this is our goal. And if we talk about a scale in white here, let's say a scale in this direction from lowest level of abstraction. So let's say lowest, and then at the end of the scale here is highest. Let's explore the tools and where ethers and Web3.js fit in. And then at the higher end of abstraction, we'll talk about some of the more modern tools that I suggest you use if you're building in Web3. So at kind of off the charts of low level of abstraction, I guess somehow you could actually do this yourself without a tool. I don't know how you would do it and I'm not that smart of a programmer to tell you how to do that, but let's just explore that as an option that's kind of off the scale here. So let's say do it yourself somehow and just add a bunch of question marks here. So somehow you can do it yourself. I don't know, write your own kind of library, speak to the blockchain in your own made up language, something like that. So that's kind of establishing how low level we're talking about here. Above that is ethers, ethers.js. And this is a tool that is amazing, as I said, for building out libraries and doing all of these things like connecting to wallets, connecting to the blockchain, reading and writing from smart contracts and so many other things. But I don't think you should be using it if you're building out Web3 applications. A layer on top of that is Web3.js. Web3.js is kind of an abstraction on top of Ethers. It actually uses Ethers under the hood. If you take a look at the package JSON, you can see Ethers is a dependency of the Web3.js dependency here, or the library rather. What it does is on top of Ethers, it kind of adds a couple of layers of abstraction like the Web3 ETH, Web3 SHH, BZZ, and the utils built for DApp developers. So this is a little more um, oriented towards Web3 app developers, specifically on the web. And it allows you to do the kind of similar functionality to Ethers like connect to wallets, connect to smart contracts, connect to things like accounts. And it also includes some utility functions as you can see on the left here. Honestly, I don't think this is actually that high of an abstraction 
on top of ethers. It's very similar. I would always say it's kind of like up here, <laughs> over here maybe, in terms of levels of abstraction. You can do a little bit more in terms of building your Web3 applications, but I don't actually think that it is much of an abstraction over the top of it. That's why I don't suggest you build the, your Web3 applications using these tools as they're very low level in this kind of scale of abstraction. And I'm gonna show you two more tools now that fit into this higher end of the scale that are going to make your life easier. What I mean by this kind of layer of abstraction here is you literally almost need to bring everything yourself if you're using these libraries. Things like the contract ABI, you need to bring your own RPC to actually connect to the blockchain. You need to bring your own IPFS gateway if you're going to bring in information from decentralized storage such as IPFS. You need to do all of these really annoying things like connecting users' wallets using the window.ethereum. It doesn't handle uh, a variety of different wallet connections. Some of those aren't injected into the browser, which is what these libraries expect. You need to manage all of these complex things and it's all in JavaScript. It's not designed specifically for you to use libraries like React or any other libraries on top of React like Next.js, which I would recommend that you're using if you're not, which is a little side note. But these aren't specifically designed to kind of integrate into the tooling that you're building when you're creating web applications. So what are the alternatives that take away some of these complexities for us? First one I'm gonna show you is a tool called Wagme. And Wagme, I'll show you the documentation here, is a library built on ethers. On top of ethers, it has ethers as a dependency in the actual source code. It has React hooks for pretty much everything that you would wanna do inside of a Web3 application, like signing messages, connecting your wallet, displaying ENS and balance information, interacting with contracts and the blockchain and much more. And that pretty much ticks off all of the criteria of a tool that we wanted to build our Web3 application here all right off the bat. And not only does it do that, it has all of these features and capabilities with built-in caching, request deduplication, and persistence. Basically what that means is it uses a tool in the source code here, you can see in the dependencies, it has this library called Tanstack React Query, which is this library here. Tanstack Query is my favorite library that I've ever discovered, and that's no exaggeration. This literally changed my life when I was building React applications. And what it does is essentially, when you're pulling and writing data to anywhere that is on the web, you have to deal with so many complex things like caching, managing loading states, managing error states, reloading data when it's out of date, reloading data when you write new data, all of these complex features that you would typically have to build yourself in an application is handled out of the box for you in this library called Tanstack Query. And you can see here the features are caching, deduplicating multiple requests, updating out of date data in the background. So when you leave the website, come back to that window, it pulls all of the queries again for you. Knowing when data is out of date, you can also say to your queries, hey, I've just changed some data. You need to rerun these queries again. It provides all of these amazing features, pagination, lazy loading, managing memory, blah, 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 all of these amazing features. I do have a blog post about this on my blog, a little subtle plug here, if you wanna learn more in detail about React Query or Tanstack Query as it is called now. What Wagme is doing is essentially it exports these um, hooks that are actually using the Tanstack Query React hooks called Use Query and Use Mutation. And you can see in this little example here, it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but what is happening here is you have a Use Query. First argument is the query key, which is the cache key. You then provide an async function that performs something. And every time you perform the same function with the same parameters, it doesn't rerun. It says, hey, do I have this in the cache? I do here's your information immediately without even fetching that async function. So immediately out of the box, you get all of these benefits. You get things like the is loading flag. So if that async function is still running, you get a flag to say true or false on the UI. You get this is error flag to say, hey, something went wrong with the async function. You can show that on the UI, you can say is success. 
finally, if the actual data comes back from that async function, you have it in this data field. So a lot of benefits to using this library, and that is kind of the foundation of Wagme, is to combine the ethers.js library with this tanstack query library for you to have React hooks available for you for pretty much everything. So you can do things like uh, connect to users' wallets, connect to chains, set up the providers, use the wallet connectors that they have for all of the most common um, wallet connectors. You can have all these hooks, like use account, use balance, use contract read, use contract write, all of these amazing functions available for you to use and you get all of the benefits of Tanstack query under the hood. There are recommendations that Wagme suggests for creating UI components for things like connecting to users' wallets and probably the one that I would recommend to work with um, Wagme the best would be Rainbow Kit or a tool called Connect Kit, I believe it is. Connect Kit here and you can use one of these to kind of allow users to have a more powerful experience when they're connecting their wallets to your application using Wagme. And the kind of downside that I wanted to raise with Wagme, although it is an amazing tool, is you still need to bring your smart contract ABI and bring that into kind of constant value in your project that represents everything that you can do with your smart contract. You need to provide it to this use contract hook here every time. You also need to bring your own RPC. So you use a service like Alchemy or fall back to the free public provider one that does get heavily rate limited when you are using these public ones. So you also need to bring your RPC, you also need to bring your own kind of IPFS and decentralized storage solutions. And you can use a bunch of tools that are kind of supplementary to Wagme to kind of populate the pieces of the puzzle that you need to build out your Web3 application. If we go back to our diagram, let's shift it over a little bit and let's make some space for the kind of final layer of abstraction, which is ThirdWeb's suite of tools. I currently work at ThirdWeb, so full disclosure there. I was using ThirdWeb's tools for my freelancing projects as an end user before I joined the team. So I wanna make that clear. I don't want this to be clouded by the fact that I work at ThirdWeb. I was actually using the tooling before I joined the team. So if that makes you not wanna to listen to this opinion, that's understandable, but this is coming from a place where I was using ThirdWeb before I joined the team. This is not like a hashtag ad or anything like that. Recently, I posted this on Twitter and got some attention about building the layers or the parts of a full stack Web3 application, introducing all of these tools available for each kind of piece of the puzzle and got some feedback about what I was missing. So I definitely recommend you check out this. It was a very interesting post. The reason that I bring up this diagram is because I spent a lot of time making it. <laughs> and if you need just to read and write data from smart contracts in the blockchain directly, you can use Wagme as a solution to do that. You could also use ThirdWeb's React SDK, which essentially gives you all of the features that you would expect from Wagme and also uses the Tanstack query, caching and things like that under the hood. Also is powered by Ethers.js. So the React SDK is actually very similar to Wagme but also gives you a broader spectrum of what is available to you as a developer. What ThirdWeb does differently from Wagme, and I'm not saying Wagme or ThirdWeb is better or worse, this is just what ThirdWeb is designed to do, is provide more pieces of the puzzle when building out a full stack Web3 application. For example, it provides an RPC by default. It provides an IPFS gateway by default. It has built-in UI components for connecting wallets. So you don't have to bring in anything other than ThirdWeb's SDK. It has capability to upload and download information from decentralized storage solutions. What you can do is you can override any aspect of that, use ThirdWeb as the baseline. And for example, let's say you really like Rainbow Kit, you can bring in Rainbow Kit. You really like Alchemy's SDK or Alchemy's RPC, you can bring in Alchemy's RPC and override any of the default values that it provides. It doesn't force you to go out and find solutions that you integrate with the tool you can do that if you want to, but what it does is provide a set of powerful defaults for you to build out almost every aspect of the full stack Web3 experience. If we take a look at the React SDK documentation for third web, we'll find a bunch of familiar things like use contract, use contract read, use contract write. We'll have all of the syntax of the Tanstack query. So this is all powered by Tanstack query, similarly as Wagme is. Some of the hooks at the moment are even just using Wagme under the hood. So you can kind of almost think of this as either a similar level of abstraction to Wagme 
And then also have this kind of layer on top where you have very specific hooks for things like use mint NFT or use batch mint NFT or use NFTs. And then you have things for, you know, a layer on top of Wagme for very specific smart contracts like NFT smart contracts, marketplaces, tokens, edition smart contracts, all of the kind of most common things that you're going to be doing at the moment in Web3. Not only that, you have these sort of separate entries into the documentation and into what's available to you as a developer, things like UI components, things like built-in storage and authentication capabilities. There is a much broader net of things that you can do with the Thoeb SDKs that are available when you compare that to Wagme. Really what I'm trying to say here is Third Web provides you with a broader set of tools at the baseline by default. So out of the box, you have the IPFS gateway, you have the RPC, you have the connect wallet capabilities with the UI components inside of the React SDK. And you also have all of the core features that you would expect out of Wagme, like connecting to users' wallets, reading writing data from smart contracts and the blockchain. With Wagme, you'll need to source your own components for things that it doesn't provide. So you'll need to source your own RPC, you need to source your own gateway, you need to source your own connect wallet UI components, you need to source your own IPFS capabilities. With Third Web, you get all of that out of the box and you can then supplement anything you don't like. So you can bring in Wagme or you can bring in Rainbow Kit, you can bring in your own IPFS and bring in your own RPC. That's really the difference between Third Web and Wagme in the sense of building specifically React applications. So in terms of our diagram, what this means is if you're using this kind of Wagme level of abstraction, and this is an amazing tool, I'm not dumping on Wagme again, you can source your own solutions for RPCs, you can source your own solutions for IPFS, you can source your own solution for auth, I'm not sure if Wagme has auth built in, it might, it might not. UI components for things like connecting users' wallets and managing IPFS rendering on the UI, these things, work well with Wagme and you can use all of the tools that I've kind of outlined in this diagram here as uh, available options for you to build out your Web3 applications. What I'm saying in this diagram here is that that web brings all of these things along with you into kind of one solution or multiple packages that you can use inside of your front-end applications. The important thing to note here is that if you want to override any aspects that ThirdWeb provides by default, you want to bring your own RPC, you want to bring your own IPFS, you want to bring your own WAGME, you want to bring Rainbow Kit or any aspect of this diagram to override the defaults, you can do that. And I think that might be a bit of a misconception that people have about Thoeb is that you are kind of forced into this even vendor lock level of application where everything is provided by Thoeb. That's not the case. You can override any aspect of the default values inside of any of Thoeb's SDKs, not even just the React package. One last thing I'll mention about Third Web in this diagram is that there's kind of this whole other side to the Third Web product where you have the capability to deploy smart contracts, write them using our Solidity SDK, or deploy them directly from the Explore page without even writing any code at all. The reason I bring this up is because if you are kind of already in the Thoeb ecosystem in the contract side of things, you then get all of these benefits inside of the React SDK, where for example, if it's a Thoeb web deployed contract, you then don't have to bring in the ABI to the use contract hook. And you get all of these nice to haves when you kind of utilize the other parts of the Thoeb ecosystem available inside of the SDK itself that isn't going to be available when you're using any of the other tools that we've outlined in this video. So to kind of summarize what we've said, Ethers is a powerful fundamental part of most of the tools being used in the Web3 world. I don't think you should be using it directly to build out Web3 applications. You can have a much better developer experience and a more powerful user experience using two of the more modern tools that are available. One of those being Wagme and the other one of those being Third Web. Hey, <laughs> did you enjoy the video? If you did, subscribe to the channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.